Hello, and welcome to Inside Cottonwood. I'm your host, Doug Bartosh, and I have a really interesting guest uh, this month, uh, Carl Maggio, who um, I think visited our library is where we got this, but <laughs> Carl has written a book called Swinging for the Fences, and it's about the uh, American Legion baseball, and uh, uh, I, he's just got a great history, and he's also uh, grew up with uh, George Anderson, probably somebody you'd recognize more as Sparky Anderson, who had a great uh, managerial career with both the Cincinnati Reds and uh, Detroit Tigers. And uh, so we're here to talk about not only uh, Carl's book, oh, and let me also introduce uh, <laughs> Cynthia Richmond, who's his uh, Kind of editor. Editor and doing some PR and marketing for Carl and Good. for his books, yes. But um, just sitting here talking to Carl, he's got some great history about uh, baseball. And uh, and so let's start off and, and talk about your relationship with, uh, with Sparky Anderson. Yeah, well, uh, uh, I grew up in Southern California, Los Angeles area, and uh, we uh, when when uh, that was during the time when you know there was you uh, as a kid you can do anything, get on your bike and you could go and you didn't have to worry about anything. Yeah, we we go to, we all went to this one playground, the Rancho Los Angeles playground, which is in L.A. in South Central L.A. and uh, and 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 we we we'd leave our homes with lunches <laughs> and we'd spend the whole day playing baseball uh, and ping pong and uh, billiards and whatever was there was a lot of games and stuff but the main thing was was pick up baseball it was uh, you know uh, sandlot baseball and uh, so that's when I first met Sparky there his family had moved from Bridgeport uh, South Dakota to LA when he was nine years old because they were, you know, they came for the uh, uh, for the aircraft industry. They they all had got jobs because they weren't. It was during the depression, and uh, they needed jobs, so they moved to L.A. And so Sparky, uh, it wasn't called Sparky in those days. Was, we called him George or Georgie. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Georgie was uh, was a pepper pot. He was uh, he was he was a character, and uh, we all loved him. But he had a he had this one thing about him. He had a a quick quick uh, uh, temper. <laughs> he, he he had a he had a very short fuse, and uh, if he got mad, boy, you know you you got to out of his way. <laughs> I think I can remember him arguing with a few. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a whole different story, which I'll cover a little later, because uh, he was the type of guy who who didn't uh, who couldn't stand any uh, in any. Uh, um, um, Injustice. Injustice, yeah. He, he, injustice would drive him crazy. And when an umpire would take away an out or charge him for an out, well, what he didn't think was an out, he just thought that was, he, he couldn't handle that. And he, would, he, would be, he was all over him. And, you know, since they, had, they have replay now, we, they, they decided that they, they had to, did some research on it, and the umpires on close plays were wrong 45% of the time. Almost 50% of the time. Yeah. So when he was arguing, I, I knew him so well, he would never argue with an umpire unless he knew he was right. Yeah. He would never do it. Never. Now, you both uh, kind of started your formal baseball career at USC. Did he no, play at well, USC? Well, it was funny. He, he, the, this, the, story, the story goes, he lived his home when they moved uh, to, to, to LA his uh, his home or a little bungalow they had little bungalows and they were they were poor they didn't have much money his father was a painter mm -hmm. and they were very very poor and they lived in this little bungalow right on the outskirts of, of USC right on the uh, it was it, at that time it wasn't part of the campus it, now it's it's part of the campus because they expanded into that area but there was an area that had some uh, the little cheap living bungalows and they, they and their whole family lived in in the bungalows and so he he, he uh, discovered that the you know the the SC baseball field there and he'd go watch him and and he'd love to watch him play because mm -hmm. and because he was a he was a bat boy uh, for his father's team, semi-pro team in uh, in in uh, uh, North South Dakota. So anyway, he would he would watch the games, and one day, a ball went over the fence, 
and uh, and he and he was out there, and he went into the shrubs, and the uh, the guys, the 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 managers of the uh, baseball team who who you know go after those balls couldn't find it, so George jumped in there and he found the ball, and he said, "You're looking for this, Mister?" And he says, and this guy was he he had already given up. He's walking by. He says, "That's our kid. Kid, you can have it." He says, "No." He says, "It ain't mine. I I I I can't do that." So he followed him in to the field where Rod Dado was, where the teams were playing. And he had the ball in his hand and he said, I want to, sp I want, I want to talk to the, to, the, to the boss man. And they said, who's the boss? I said, who's, he said, who's the boss man? And they pointed to Rod Dado. Well, Dado was just, I mean, most kids would have taken the ball and gone home with it, you know. Dado was so impressed with his honesty and, uh, and, and, he, was, and, and he, was, he was like a little man you know, like a little boy in a butt in a man's uh, body. You know, yeah. he was really uh, quite an entertaining kid, and Dano just uh, just really liked him right away. So he said, uh, "What's your name, son?" He says, "Georgie." He says, "Well, Georgie, how'd you like to be a bat boy?" Yes. Anyway, he he was the bat boy for SC for five years just on that one thing because he was oh. honest enough, and that's that was that that, you know, he was born on George Washington's birthday. And I think that made him. <laughs> he could not tell a lie. Could not yeah. tell a lie. You know. Yes, I, I. I. And he will never. He would never tell a lie. And he was so honest. He was. Yeah. I've never met somebody as honest, so completely honest as he was. So, so, kind of outline both your baseball career and and then how that paralleled with uh, Sparky Anderson. Well, we we were both the same age. He he was uh, he was born. On uh, uh, Washington's birthday, and I was born in March. A couple, about about a week, ten days later. later. So we were we were we were at the, uh, in the same age group. So we were on all the same teams because they put us together on teams by age. Mm -hmm. You know, right. So we started out playing, which was now would be called little league. Right. But it was called of all things they, they didn't have. A, Political correctness in those days, they called it midget baseball, <laughs> <laughs> and so we played midget baseball together, and that was uh, you know 11 and 12 year olds, uh, 10, 11 and 12 year olds, uh, on this playground, and um, the playground director was Benny Lefevre. <laughs> now Benny Lefevre uh, was uh, was 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 a a sports maven. He had played. Football at USC, which was real close to there, right. and so he 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 was a good football coach, baseball coach, and a great motivator. So, um, but he he watched us all grow up together from you know, 10, 11, and 12, to we got to 17 where we where he organized a, uh, a, a American Legion team, and uh, in, in those days American Legion was the only game in town. You know, so uh, if you didn't play American Legion baseball during the summer, you didn't play you didn't play summer ball at all. And, so, and what what year was this? This was 1951. Okay. Yeah, we were 17 in 1951. Okay. So if you do the arithmetic, you know how old. We are. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so uh, uh, so Benny, uh, uh, so we, we grew up. We we played, uh, you know, uh, together. In fact, the team we we, we were played on the team called the Terrors. And we won the city championship that year, uh, of all the other playgrounds in the city. So that kind of you know. So we we were, we were a bunch of ragtag ball players. We had talent, but we were not disciplined. Yeah. And that's what that's what Benny brought to us when when he got the team. In that uh, uh, there was like 40 guys try out, tried out for the team. But then, but only 16 could play. That was the rules of American Legion. So we had he he boiled it down. All the guys in, uh, that played on this playground, he boiled it down to 16 players. Right. And we had uh, George Sparky Anderson was our shortstop. Billy Consolo, who played 10 years in the big leagues, was our third baseman. Uh, 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 Billy Latchman, who uh, played professional baseball, and two of his brothers were ma managers, who happened to be our bat boys, both Renee Latchman and uh, and and uh, 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 what the, what's his name? I don't anyway, remember his and, name either. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the, uh, 
Marcel, Marcel and Rene, both French. They're they're all French, <laughs> and uh, they they both managed uh, in major leagues. And uh, he, at <laughs> same age as me, is still catching, uh, coach catching for the L.A. Angels during spring training. Wow! In fact, I'm going to see him when we go down there. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. Let's. Uh, we need to go ahead and uh, time is flying by here. Wow! Let's go ahead and take our first break okay. and come back and join us again. We've still got a lot uh, history to go through here. Getting dumped by text is harsh. Try getting dumped by tennis ball. My ex owner drove me out to the woods, yelled fetch, and by the time I bought the ball back, he was gone. Yeah, I was pissed. But the folks at the shelter helped me let go of my anger. I learned coping skills, like taking it to the hole. Boom! Now I'm ready to fetch again. But how about I throw and you run and get it? Welcome back to Inside Cottonwood. I'm your host, Doug Bartosh, and I'm here today with Carl Maggio and talking about his book, Swinging for the Fences. And uh, also here with uh, Cynthia Richmond, who is uh, kind of helping Carl uh, market his book. Um, so you were talking about uh, kind of this ragtag team of local kids in the LA area. Where did your baseball career and, and you and Sparky go from there? Well, uh, we went in different directions. <laughs> he, uh, he signed a contract uh, right out of high school. I went to USC and uh, played there four years for Rod Dato. He signed out of high school for $3,000 which in those days was worth 27000 yeah. or so now. Uh, and, uh, and Billy Consolo was a bonus baby and, and went right up to the major leagues because at that time, if you signed for more than 4000 you had to go to the big leagues for, okay. and, and sit on the bench for two years. <laughs> so anyway, uh, George, George got married right out of high school because uh, the, the gal that he uh, met in fourth grade and fell in love with was the gal that he married after when he graduated from high school. So he, he signed this contract and he became a professional baseball player. He played in the uh, California State League with uh, Santa Barbara his first year. And uh, so he, he played, he went through uh, the minor leagues and, and played one year in the major leagues with, uh, with, with Philadelphia Phillies. And they had a terrible team. They had a terrible team, and he got into some bad habits in that team because he was, he was a he was a pepper pot. He was always on top of everything, and uh, uh, I should go back to the point where he got his nickname Sparky. We always knew him as George or Georgie, uh, and uh, most people don't even know what his first name was after because he was one of those guys with the one name, yeah, <laughs> one name character, you know, like Cher or those type of thing. Yeah. So uh, he he was he was playing in the minor leagues. He was playing in the uh, Texas State League, and uh, the uh, and and he 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 was always arguing with umpires because you know if he thought the umpires uh, was wrong, he was he was all over him. So the the announcer said. Oh, here comes Sparky charging. Here, here comes uh, uh, there's sparks flying out on second base. He was playing second base at that time, and uh, and they said the sparks are flying in second base, and <laughs> and here comes Sparky charging the umpire again. So uh, a, a sports writer picked it up, heard it, and picked it up, and started calling him Sparky, and the name just stuck like gum on it. 
you know, gum on his shoe. It just, <laughs> George didn't like that. But no, at first. yeah, yeah. He he always thought, you know, he he, he thought it was a good name for a, a uh, for a dog to bet on at the racetrack, you know, <laughs> dog track. But uh, so out of respect, we really should call him George as, as well, opposed to Sparky. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, but you know, I talk about. George and people go, who's that? Yeah. You know, they don't know who I'm talking about. Yeah. Unless I, uh -huh. I did 95 percent of the people knew him as Sparky Anderson. Period. Yeah. yeah. His name was George Lee Anderson. Yeah. But nobody ever knew that, and that's what he was in. in you know, he was uh, he, he was inducted in the Hall of Fame in that uh, in, with that name. But actually, you talk a lot about the difference in the personas between George and Sparky. They were really different personalities. Well, there were there were two two different personalities, yeah, and, uh, and that's what the book is about because it's George and Sparky, because uh, he had you know when he put on the uniform he was Sparky. Yeah, and uh, and and even when he played with us on the on his playground, he was Sparky, but he did, but but he didn't have that name. He was still Georgie, but until he got the name Sparky, that didn't all come together. And then all of a sudden, when he got that nickname Sparky, I mean, he was Sparky, and everybody said, "Man, he's the spark plug of your team," or <laughs> "He was us. He he is a spark, spark," you know, uh, and and so. He 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 earned that name. I mean, he he really did. And uh, uh, the guys uh, who, um, who 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 knew him when like when when he was managing Cincinnati, I'd I'd go out into the Dodger Stadium and you know and go out there early and try to get, see if I can get right. to talk to him. Well, there's so many people around the dugout. There's hundreds of people just looking for autographs. Yeah. And they were all yelling, Sparky, Sparky, Sparky. And he walked by, and I said. George, and he looked right around. He <laughs> knew that if someone knew his name George. That it was a, somebody he knew or went to school with. Yeah, yeah, it was a close friend. Yeah. because nobody knew his name. Huh, that's interesting. Yeah. So, so it seemed like his playing career was relatively short. Well, he he uh, at least in professional <laughs> in the major leagues, he only yeah. played one year. He had two eighteen, and didn't hit a home run, and the team was like. They were in the cellar, uh, the Philadelphia Phillies. So, he he never got a chance. He never got a chance to uh, play anymore. I mean, he was just like, okay, you know, you tried to to make it in the major leagues. You didn't make it. You're a minor leaguer. And he always said, he said, my 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 goal is to see what I am in baseball. If I'm a minor leaguer, I'll play minor league all my life. If I'm a, if I'm a major leaguer, I'll play major league. And he was he he was a minor leaguer. Well, people recognized right away that he had a mind for baseball because he had he had was a was was a, a bat boy for Rod Dato. Yeah. For five years, he picked up a lot of stuff. Who, who was the manager for for SC? Yeah, coach. They yeah. They had the call, call them coaches in, the, in college in, in college baseball. Yeah. So um, so yeah. So he he knew more about baseball than any of us. Yeah. From just just from hanging out with Rod Dato and you know, and he worked out with the base, with the SC baseball team, so uh, uh, you know, so he he just uh, he everybody recognized that he knew so much about baseball that uh, uh, Kent Cook or was that uh, this, he he was he 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 owned a, a baseball franchise and he said. I want you to be my manager. He was a second. He was playing second base. I want you to be second play, play second base and be the manager. And this is what they did yeah. a lot in the minor leagues yeah. in those days. They played and managed. Yeah. So when he was, you know, he was still like thirty, and he was playing and managing, both managing and playing. And so when finally when he went to when when Cincinnati hired him, he was only thirty-five. And, and what year was it that he? Started with Cincinnati. Seventy, seven. I, I believe it was early 70, 70s, seventy-two. Wasn't it? I think. Yeah. 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 And uh, and he lasted there until seventy-eight. Until you know, uh, but he won two, two World Series in the in, right. in, in at that time, and then you know, and it was part of the big red machine. Yeah. So he so, was managing guys like Bench and. Johnny Bench and Pete Rose. Pete and, Rose, yeah, yeah. I mean, that yeah, that was a yeah. pretty spectacular Joe, team. Joe Morgan, yeah, yeah. 
Piros one time said that he would walk through fire in a gasoline suit for Sparky Anderson. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever well, they, he needed him to do, uh, he would do. Yeah. They loved him. They yeah. loved him. I mean, when he was fired, they all called the general manager and complained, all, all the ball players. They, I mean, he was like a father figure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, he taught them so much about life. Not only, and, and the book has got a lot of life lessons in it from, from what I learned from him. Hmm. So he... And, and, and so, um, and he really did have a successful career at, at Cincinnati. Yes. And, and then, like you were saying, the, the year after winning the two World Series, uh, they show up, what, second in their division. Division, and they fired him. Well, the reason <clears throat> they fired him, they say, was that because he wanted, they wanted him to fire his pitching coaches. They didn't feel that the pitching coaches were doing a good enough job. And he, they wanted him to fire the pitching coaches, and he says, no, I won't do it. He says, I brought them into the big leagues, and, and he says, and I, I'm not going to take them out. Hmm. He says, they did a good job. So he had a dis disagreement with them as hmm. far as uh, uh, the, the general manager, who, who at that time uh, was Wagner. Dick Wagner. Dick yeah. Wagner had just taken over the job yeah. from, uh, uh, from um, gosh, I can't remember his name. Uh, uh, yeah. Wassum. Uh, 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 yeah. yeah. Bob, Bob Wassum, yeah. And... Uh, and uh, Bob loved him, but he, he was retiring, and, uh, and uh, Wagner took over. So Wagner kind of got sideways with George, and George said, no, I, he dug his heels in. He said, no, I will not fire, fire yeah. them. So they fired him. Yeah, but probably, I mean, he was a loyal guy to the people that worked for him. Very it, much so. Whether they were players or coaches. You couldn't ask for somebody who had your back and your loyalty better than him. He yeah. loved his ball players. He he treated them like equals. Uh, he was uh, the, all of the people who have ever played for him said he was the best manager they ever played for. Yeah. We need to take our next break. Um, come back and join us, and let's hear about uh, Sparky Anderson and the D Detroit Tigers. Come <laughs> yeah. back and join us. moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Alvin and the Chipmunks want to remind you, bacteria can hide in food and make you ill. Wow. But you can keep bacteria from ruining your day with four simple steps. Clean. I'm waiting for the ring cycle. Separate. <laughs> Cook. Fire in the hole. And chill. We Chipmunks are notoriously tidy. Check your steps. The road trip to food safety starts at foodsafety.gov. Hello and welcome back to Inside Cottonwood. I'm your host, Doug Bartosh. And again, I'm here with uh, Carl Maggio, who's written a book about the uh, about the American uh, Legion baseball, um, but mostly about his good friend uh, um, Sparky Anderson, or as as Carl knows him, George Georgie. Anderson. I, Georgie. I, I call him George all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so um, he went from Cincinnati, um, very successful uh, time at Cincinnati, to the D Detroit Tigers. Yeah, he sat out a year. He sat out a year. He really wanted to, to you know, because he. He was really hurt when uh, that hurt him a lot more than he showed uh, when Cincinnati fired him. He 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 loved being there and with those guys. And when they fired him, he was really hurt. So he he had to he had to sit out a year. Yeah. And then uh, and then De uh, Detroit picked him up, uh, wanted him, and uh, and uh, 
the the first day of the uh, of of the uh, media day that they had that after they hired him, he made uh, he made the uh, prediction that in five years they would be in the World Series. And uh, Billy Consolo, who he had he had hired to be his his uh, bench coach, said, "Why did you do that? Why would you say we we can't live up to that? Yeah, you put you're crazy." He says. Well, it just came out. <laughs> That's the way he just came out. He said whatever was on his mind, you know, and uh, and, and 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 to his word, fifth year they won the World Series. They started out uh, thirty and five, huh. starting the season. Thirty yeah. thirty wins and five losses. Yeah. Some incredible incredible records. incredible wins, and they they just ran. They they were in first place the whole time. And, uh, and 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 they uh, they won it, uh, beat San Diego in the in the World Series four to one, and, um, and 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 it was for, the funny part about it was it was in Detroit they finished it in, in in the old Detroit stadiums where we played our our championship game uh, as, oh, as, right. as in 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 uh, in, in uh, American Legion. Huh. So uh, talk it was a called little. Riggs Stadium in those days. Talk a little bit about. You know, obviously he was the uh, first manager to win a game in the National League and or World, Series, not, yeah. World Series and then in the American League as well. What are some of the other kind of, I mean, I know he was manager of the year um, quite a few years. He, and, he, yeah, he was manager of the year about three or four times. Um, he, he has the highest winning percentage, oh, well, second highest winning percentage in modern baseball. Uh, Hall of Fame. Hall of Hall Fame, of mm -hmm. yeah, first, first, when he was eligible the first time, he won, he was in the Hall of Fame. At that time, when he was inducted to the Hall of Fame, he was the third winningest manager in the history of baseball. And Connie Mack and, and McGraw uh, were the only two other ones, and they had they, you know, of course, Connie Mack was the owner of of the team. He couldn't fire himself, and even though he had a he, even though he had a low winning percentage, he was he, he still was you know won a lot, won of, a lot games. of games. Yeah. And George had a winning percentage of uh, five uh, five eighty eight, around five eighty, and uh, the only one higher than him was uh, Bobby Cox. Wow. Bobby Cox uh, had won about uh, close to six hundred, <clears throat> but uh, so if. If Sparky ever shared with you his most memorable moment in baseball, what what would that be? Well, you know, uh, are, you, are you talking about baseball or being in baseball? Just, Just uh, okay. he was obviously yeah. a man that yes. loved yeah. the sport. Okay. Yes. Well, the, the first thing, of course, the number one thing is uh, being inducted to the Hall of Fame, and then be, uh, and then number two was being inducted into the Hall of Fame at USC. Hmm. The only bat boy to achieve that. He got he yeah, he was he never played a, an inning yeah. at USC. He was a bat boy for five years and he got inducted into the sports hall of fame because of what he did in the major leagues. There's another really important moment, though, and that is when he's, his career was saved by the umpire who didn't press charge. Oh, target. yeah, yeah. Well, we get into that, yeah. But uh, that, uh, so he said in the third, third one was winning the National American, American Legion Championship in 1951. So it was Hall of Fame, USC, and he put the American Legion win ahead of all of his three World Series wins. Yeah. He says because... What's better, he says, with <laughs> being world champions at, at 17. Yeah. You can't true. beat, you can't get any better than that. <laughs> <laughs> that's absolutely true. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to wrap it up here. We're almost out of time, but I, I do want to um, uh, tell the folks that you're going to be throwing out the first pitch at the uh, uh, Dodgers uh, Angels spring training game on March 11th. Yes. Um, and let's see. If I can reach home plate. Yeah. <laughs> so I know the Angels play in Tempe. Where are the Dodgers playing? They're play, they Hill? play where, uh, where there were the, where the, uh, the uh, oh. uh, stadium, the, uh, 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 where the, where the, uh, the, the uh, football share? team. 
where the football team plays out there. That's, oh, okay. Uh, Glendale. Out Glendale. Out in Glendale. Yeah. That's out. Okay. It's out. Because I haven't west, been to that stadium. The west yet. side. Yeah, it's a beautiful stadium. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And and you've got another book coming out. Yes, another book. Uh, yeah. You want to talk about sure. that? Sure. Well, the new book. This book is about the American Legion and all those team players. Are, one of many of them are still alive and still get together. The new book is George and Sparky, the unlikely patron saint of baseball, and it's written by. There are other books about Sparky Anderson, but none that knew him since he was nine years old and can share right. the personal family and uh, friendship stories that Carl has. Well, I, unfortunately, we got to wrap it up. Yes, well. <laughs> because I think I could do a couple more shows. <laughs> yeah, <now>. yeah. <laughs> well, I got, there's, there's many, many more stories. Well, well, definitely when your new book comes out, come, okay. come back. Oh, and, I definitely. And, that would be and, great, yeah. And, you know, I want to get a chance to read it, I think, before I interview you. But uh, yeah, yeah. great, great interview uh, this month. Um, come back and join us again on Inside Cottonwood.